Uh, hey guys, welcome to Data Trek, your one-stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. Today is a special session where I have Biswajit with me. Introducing Biswajit, Biswajit is a director of data engineering analytics and insights at TataClick, which is a leading e-commerce company in India. And he has over 15 plus years of experience in delivering high impact data science and data engineering solutions across markets. Prior to TataClick, uh, Biswajit has worked in various companies like Genpact, HP, Western Union, Target and Walmart. And uh, during my tenure at Walmart, uh, Biswajit was my reporting manager and he played a pivotal and influential role in shaping my professional development and career trajectory. And also on the fun side, Biswajit is a great sportsman. So welcome, welcome Biswajit to the channel. Hey, thanks a lot, Abhishek. I think um, it has been a pleasure. It means uh, I have seen you since the time you joined Walmart as a campus, right? I think one one year after that, if I'm not wrong. And we worked for almost four years. And so I have seen you growing from a junior data scientist to a much, much senior professional now. And I also seen, obviously, from, from the inception day of Data Track till now, how this particular channel have grown and, you know, the content, what you have put. Uh, so great to see your progress, man. And good to uh, good to be invited by you in this particular podcast. Uh, looking forward to it. Thank you. It's, it's also a very special session for me. Uh, so starting the session, I have a lot of questions for you. The first one is, uh, sure. can you share your journey in the field of data science from the very early start of your career to your current role at TataClick, where you are working as a very senior leadership role as a director? So how was your journey from the very beginning to, to till date? And how has how have you seen the field evolve over the time? And what are the significant changes you have seen? Sure. So I think uh, my starting is more of a natural progression, I'll say, because uh, my background uh, was in mathematics and statistics. Um, so I did my bachelor's in mathematics from Presidency College in November 2004, pass out, and then did my master's from IIT Bombay in applied statistics and informatics, uh, again, 2006, pass out. So I think getting into analytics industry was uh, was the next step anyway. Uh, so it, it, but but the thing is that I think, so I from campus, I joined G Capital. And the interesting thing was, I got the offer letter of G Capital, and when I joined, it became Genpact. Uh, so, so that was the initial days of Genpact, actually. Uh, but I, I think um, uh, so. So, yes, the joining there was no special plan as such. Means it was it was very very natural. Uh, but to your coming to a second question, and that coincides with my career is basically the way uh, this analytics industry have shaped up, right? So when I joined in 2006, it was called analytics industry. There was no data science, no ML engineering terms. There was only analytics. That's the only term which was there. Uh, and then from then, um, you know, the then the analytics consulting becomes a big deal after that, uh, you know, after, say, from 2008, 2009. Uh, there was not much of a product company at that point of time who were doing analytics per se, <laughs> um, but then, obviously, I think around 2014, 15, uh, this product com product concepts of analytics comes into the came into the picture, and also the term data science started was coined. Um, and then, obviously, now there are so many different streams under so called data, right? Right from data engineering, data science, ML engineer, uh, analytics transformer, uh, and there are so many other you know like different kind of roles which is which is evolving every day. Um, so I think one of the major thing which I can think of, I think a couple of things which which is very notable, right, in my journey. And again, it, as I mentioned, that it coincide with the analytics industry. I think the evolution of technology. I think that is one that was one of the key. Uh, when we started uh, in 2006, um, SAS, uh, so this full form of status, statistical application software. I don't know how many of your uh, viewer will be knowing about SAS. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of banks still use SAS, by the way. Um, so that was their main software at that point of time, right? Um, uh, the data was small because the big data didn't came into came into existence at that point of time. However, the problem statements, especially on the structured data, was more or less the same. Uh, means I remember my first project was around customer segmentation, uh, right? Uh, so I'm talking about way back in 2006. So again, customer segmentation to your all viewers are not a new problem. And neither market basket because that was my second <laughs> second uh, 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 project. Uh, 
so essentially i think uh, technology tech stack has evolved quite a lot right uh, from saas it moved to r and then after that you know once it moved to python then the come the pi spark and then obviously by that time big data became big uh so the entire hadoop ecosystem came into the picture uh, and then after that the cloud started coming right so uh, so in terms of the tech stack i think and then after that obviously we moved from cpu to gpu world so uh, so those are those evolution i have seen um but the problem statements evolution is like in structured world is still the same but i think the unstructured problem has evolved uh, means when we joined there were very very less unstructured problem because unstructured data was not captured at that point of time in a very very great way uh, but i think over the period of time by 2014 15 the you know the that uh, uh, i think courtesy of andrew ng um, you know that deep learning boom started happening right uh, means the first course came deep learning.ai i think in 2017 around that particular time and all the text related project nlp then the image voice and all those things started happening um so this is the evolution i've seen um anything specifically you want to have no uh, want to know oh no, that's great that's great you're very well put it and uh, when you were talking about the different bunch of roles that exist today like there is devops ml ops prompt engineers yes. decision scientists yes. <laughs> like all these terms are very confusing but definitely the core remains the same which is solving a business problem using data science and analytics exactly, exactly. and bisojit in this career uh, in this long career uh, which are the one or two projects which have made significant in, uh, business impact and which you enjoyed the most doing so can you if you can share that with us sure i i think uh, one of the project which you are also part of right i definitely want to highlight was the markdown optimization so you know like that was uh, as you know uh, that particular solution got deployed in five different markets of walmart right um, right from canada mexico then uk uh, then i think central america and i forgot the other one i think china if i'm not wrong um and that yielded a lot of uh, you know delta revenue right and incremental revenue correct so that um, that was one of the project i think the second thing what i will just deviate a bit from data science because my current role revolves around data engineering as well right so i think uh, one of the assignment which i was given when i joined uh, taraclick was uh, in improving the data maturity uh, score essentially so i think um, so in in data so the way data engineering system works right it, it has mostly four verticals uh, that's what we actually operate uh, one is the data operation another is the you know the data governance uh, the uh, data security and the cloud cloud uh, cloud ops you can call it right <clears throat> so essentially what we did we did a lot of we took a lot of initiative especially around cost cloud cost optimization uh, how to improve the data lake security uh, how to have a very robust data governance system in place and also streamline some of the data ops processes so that uh, enhances the data maturity score quite a lot i means uh, it moved from almost 3 to 4.3 um, so that that is one of the project which i felt that Uh, we did a great job in terms of the overall org standpoint um few others uh, i think um, again um, something related to a uh, little bit of nlp i'll say so one of the problem statement what we actually solving at this point of time a lot of emphasis right now is on personalization right because we both are from e-commerce company we know how personalizations are important so one of the aspect was that uh, and i'm sure that it's not a problem with tata click it's across uh that uh, you know the gender which is a very important aspect especially when you are in a fashion retailers and etc are in the database uh, there are a lot of uh, you know the data is not available any right it's missing data now if you don't know your gender how do you how will you recommend right so essentially then we used a you know some machine learning technique which is basically based on name matching one aspect second is also predicting the gender based on their browsing and the transaction history and then so what typically happens is that so you increase the fill rate from say 50% to 100% right and then that definitely enhances your personalization which in turn impacts your click through rates and revenue and etc so that's another notable project what we did in past one year got it and uh, like this type of projects the fun part is that one output of the model go is a feature for another model <laughs> and yeah, exactly and exactly cascaded models you can say 
Yeah, it, it's very interlinked, right? Say, for example, if you see this data uh, gender identification problem, right? Now, one side, it is helping the personalization, if I think from a product standpoint. Mm -hmm. But another side, if I just think from a data engineering standpoint, it also in improving your data completeness, mm -hmm. which is actually a very important metric for data quality management, right? Mm -hmm. So oh, you are solving one problem, but it is catering to catering mm -hmm. two different things in a mm -hmm. two different way, right? Mm -hmm. As you mentioned that, you know, these two are like, the, that's a the fun part. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you are, it's a one is to one mapping. It's sometimes it's like a one is to many mapping. Mm. And all together leading to customer satisfaction. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. And uh, Biswajit, like uh, next question is something that even I want to know from you that as a someone in leadership role, how do you balance out between your technical expertise and your role as a manager, as a, as a strategist, as a director? How do you trade off between the two? Like, how do you balance the two? So this is a very interesting question, by the way. <laughs> I, I think uh, most of the senior leaders are still finding that sweet spot or that fire that that answer. But I'll just tell you what I do or what I figure it out, right? Maybe you know, maybe it is working for me now, but I don't know whether it's a long term solution or not. So, so eventually, you know, like as you grow up in the in the or ladder, right? Uh, you typically don't code or you typically don't solve. Uh, problem in that sense don't solve ml problems on a day to day basis right um, but what you do is basically you participate in the core milestone reviews and you have to ask the right question to nudge the team right so i think asking the right question is a very very important aspect of any leader um, you know like so that which nudges uh, towards the final goal uh, means if you recollect that when we used to do our walmart in the review right in walmart uh, that is exactly what uh, we used to emphasize, right? Even we are when we are actually taking it to our senior leadership, right? Uh, that what kind of questions they will be asking and anticipate and prepare accordingly, right? So that's I think one of the major role uh, for us in terms of the project or the outcome output is concerned. A uh, second is about I think the overall data strategy because uh, as you grow up, right? So if you see the movement, right, right from IC. So when you are at an IC you are focusing on solving a particular problem that you are given a task saying that, hey, your accuracy is say 70%, how can you make it to 80%? Now you will put your everything, heart and soul in that, right? You will innovate, you will do, you will experiment and to, to achieve it. Now, once you became one level, you know, in your next level, like a tech lead or a manager, then you will start also seeing, okay, you under you, you have like multiple this kind of problems, right? Um, so you will, you are at a time you are handling multiple problems. Once you become little senior, so then it becomes that, okay, how the data team caters to the overall goals of the organization, right? Say, for example, in my case, that how, how, how say data and by data, it means both data engineering, analytics inside, as well as data science, how these three functions impacts impacting the overall, say, conversion ratio, right? Say, for example, if the conversion rate of a particular business target is, say, 2%, right? Now, how data will be enable them to achieve it, right? That's that's a that's that's that particular breath, breathing the gap, and strategizing is a very important aspect as you grow up as a leader, right? And second, I think, and the third, I feel, is basically that how to keep motivating your team, uh, how to actually navigate them in terms of uh, the core deliverables, and then try to also incorporate the innovation factor in there. That, you know, a lot of time what happens when you're actually solving the problem on ground because you have a deadline to meet, uh, typically you uh, you don't think about doing something else, right? Maybe something is working, you just, you carry on. It's not that you don't want to, but you don't have the, you know, leeway, uh, time or the bandwidth. But then as a leader, you need to keep nudging, saying that, hey, can we actually do it in a different way? Can we actually use uh, this technique, right? Like, for example, I'll tell you uh, one thing what we are doing right now that uh, in data engineering, I've started a track in TataClick, which is about how to use AI in data engineering, right? Say, so for example, if suppose you have the cloud cost, right, optimization. Now, we have done pretty good work and we have reduced it by 30%. But the thing is that now, can we actually reduce further using some of these intelligence, right, which is coming, right? Or say, for example, when you're creating a data governance, can you actually use some of the machine learning technique to maybe streamline some of the process, right? So. Uh, maybe on a day-to-day day-to-day act, day activity, your data our data engineering might not be thinking about it, right? But as a leader, this is what I'm my role is to nudge people 
to make them to read that you know let's see what industry is doing and then can we actually start implementing it maybe start small if it is working then go for big so i think these are the three things in my mind one is uh, nudging asking the right question second is you know like how can we um tie back data strategies with the overall goals of the organization and the third one is about again fostering that culture of innovation very well put even uh, as a tech lead when i am handling two to three projects i do the same that i ensure that uh, the flow is correct the steps that the team is taking the the way in which they are approaching the problem step by step the steps are correct and sometimes i have to ensure that they don't overdo it because as you said we are yes. always we have a time we have time limit to it so in that time we don't end up overdoing some of the step but let for the version one for the first delivery let it be uh, this much and uh, ensure that the right questions are like which can come or which can later create a problems are uh, correctly integrated in the solutioning phase only so all those kind yes. of x i also do to ensure that team continuously delivers in the right way exactly exactly and uh, next question is that uh, we know that for delivering any data science driven solution that engineering and data science has to go together they are intertwined with each other how do you ensure that the data scientists and data engineers or simple software engineers they are um, collaborating or communicating in an effective way yeah so i'll i'll just take one step back and uh, you know the this is actually was a fundamental reason of me moving from ml world to the data engineering world right because uh, you know my first 15 16 years and as you know right it it has an all totally been into data science and ml now one thing what I, what we realize what i realize is basically that uh, see at the end of the day garbage in is garbage out right so whatever you do in the space of algorithm if your data is not correct eventually nothing is coming out of it right so and that handshake is very very important and that handshake can only happen when a data leader will understand both the worlds because a lot of time what happens is that if the data engineering team doesn't understand the end goal uh they you know they only think about the tech because they're mostly the engineering uh, people right uh they're not thinking about okay using this data what the downstream teams will be solving the problem right um so i think uh, you know that that handshake which so called the sweet spot is right now called feature store that you know like you uh, uh, you build a feature store where data engineering is putting the features right and then exposing it to the downstream teams be it analytics be it data science or be it any other teams and so that the definitions are used are consistent right no one is actually building the features on their own if they have they need it you send the request to the data engineering team they create put it in the feature store so there is a consistency in terms of definition right however i think um, still i think what's important me for me as a leader is basically um emphasizing to the data engineering team that what are the problems what the data science teams are solving and accordingly you get the data for them and what are the challenges because until unless you understand the problem you will not be able to solve it right it is not a tech stack problem you can use any tech any tech stack but you need to ensure that what problem they are solving and vice versa to the data science people is also to have a good understanding of the data engineering uh, again take and the uh, platform because at the end of the day you know like when you are deploying the data in the data science solution it's not you cannot just solve it until you understand how the data flows right so essentially it's a system starting from the source system till you know the consumption so someone needs to understand it he may not be doing it but at least their understanding should be there so that that so that, this is what i try to do uh, that you know one team try to explain the uh, problem another team try to explain the solution uh, system got it so basically ensuring both team understands each other and work together to solve the yes. solve business problem yes. yes exactly and uh, like uh, every business problem comes with a strict time limit how do you ensure that the innovation is continuously there both in the data science and data engineering worlds yeah so i think um, this is what i learned in my first job uh, which is in genpact way back right and i'll just emphasize a little bit on that and then i'll go how we how i do it so eventually in a consulting world this is a concept that okay if your client is asking abc you first deliver abc and then you suggest hey we can also do d e and f right 
and if you are actually giving abc then more or less they also say that hey you know it looks good can you also try right so this is exactly the concept which i follow that you know when say most of us working work in a very stringent deadline right if you know uh, accommodating everything in that timeline is very very difficult right so i think what i tell my team and also try to ensure is basically that okay in a first version try to give what the client or the business is looking for even if it is a simple method go for it right no problem but once you once they once the trust is developed right we can always go and say that hey you are happy with this but there are some better way to do it and it might increase the accuracy accuracy maybe by another 5 to 10% right so are you okay with that what i have seen with my in my experience 8 out of 10 works if the first version is actually satisfying their need and it's on in in and it's also in the timely manner i think the second when once you go and talk, tell to them 8 out of 10 actually they say yes right so this is where is basically the innovation comes because now you can actually buy a lot more time and then try out a lot of things because your code deliverable is already done right this is an overhead what you are getting if something works out great for both the parties even if it doesn't work out then also it's a good learning for the team so that's basically my uh, funda that you know uh-huh. first give what they are needed and then uh, establish the trust and then get, go for the innovation Mm, that, that's a good fund that all of us can learn from Le- first gain the trust and uh, first prioritize the timeline deadlines and then you get enough time to innovate and uh, deliver more sophisticated solutions exactly exactly and uh, a part of that this is it now you have also started teaching in prestigious institutes as a part time so uh, how are you liking this phase of your career and how are you enjoying teaching as in general oh excellent um so so i always like teaching so basically when i was in tcs um so there is this program which is part of the tcs only that uh, which is actually it's a three way program between central government of india tcs and isi uh, indian statistical institutes so there is a they, they had a campus in tejpur uh, in assam and they had a one year of diploma program there uh, so as a part of that uh, someone from tcs used to go and take classes a full semester basically uh, so i did it in 2014 um, so i took i took a full you know half full semester of a half paper It means essentially it was a computational statistics paper 50 marks was mine and 50 marks were one of the I means isis head each of each od who was actually managing that program so she was responsible for that so it was full proper teaching right from taking quizzes mid sem and sem all the things so i that 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 experience was like brilliant means i just enjoyed a lot um so i always wanted that you know that that at some point of my life i'll make it a sort of a second stream kind of a thing and the second thing i think what triggers is basically coming back to your first question that as a leader how you balance your act between the technical and the strategies right so as you move up obviously as i mentioned right on a day to day basis you don't do those technical stuff so you keep forgetting and because that was your usp at one point of time you feel very insecure that hey, what's happening so then we all i think this is a problem with most of us uh, that we we try to find that how can we actually what can we do to get those things uh, get the ball rolling essentially i think teaching is one of the best way because anyway it, it's your assignment so you have a, uh, it's not that you it's it's basically not like any courses you are doing right at your leisure so it's also a timeline based assignment what you have been given that hey, your class is on september end so now i have one month i have to prepare all the material uh, i have to prepare the assignment for them i have to prepare some quizzes and etc etc so in that way you are also learning or you also doing right say for example if you have to take a class on say generative ai right uh, say a 8 hours lecture so now you have to prepare a 8 hours material you have to prepare the quiz you have to prepare the you know the test and preparing test is mean basically you are solving a problem only right it's just about you have to you are solving a problem and then you are giving right so essentially it helps me to uh, be in touch with the technical aspects and the coding part uh, so yes one is love for teaching second is basically it is helping me to be uh, to be in touch with the technical and the you know the the foundational things uh, so i think it's a win win 
so i'm enjoying quite a lot so is it, can you share a bit more where all uh, are you teaching currently and which courses are you taking sure so uh, you know last year so i am right now associated with iit madras um, so i am part of their i think the viva uh, committee i think you are also part of it if i'm not wrong um and then the secondly i took a um, few courses for niti um uh, niti right now has become i am mumbai uh, their brand name has changed uh, uh, there is a big assignment which uh, which i'll start from next year is with university of arizona uh, so they their their business school which is called thunderbird school of management so they are starting a proper course for the government officials that how to use ai and data uh, in their day to day job so it's basically a three module course uh, and each module has you know five sections total 15 sections so i'll be teaching couple of them uh, but it will start from next year um, so that's a big assignment i have um, i think these are the things at this point of time and and how are you managing your time so uh, this is a this are all weekend gig for me right okay. so but you get uh, you get enough time so one there is one hack so the hack is basically now initially you need to prepare a good 15 16 hours material basically right and then you can use it you can <laughs> reuse there is a high reusability <laughs> component <laughs> obviously uh, you keep on changing depending on you know for example say when i took niti last year <laughs> uh, the generative ai didn't came into the picture in that in this way right so i had the standard product recommendations market basket and few others now this year when when i'll start or i'll do i'll add the generative ai so obviously some modification need to be done but you know your i think one time is important you have to spend a good amount of time to prepare at least 15 16 hours of material but then you can keep reusing and then obviously enhancing it mm-hmm. completely agree and i can relate to it because when i'm creating the content for data track even i am learning a lot in the process and as you said uh, once you have the material we can polish it edit it modify it but we have that content to be delivered whenever needed <laughs> exactly exactly and uh, this is what would be your advice to people who are who wants to start with the data science field and also to the people who are already already are working like the working professionals to remain updated and relevant in the field got it yeah i think uh, i guess uh, I've- we have also had the similar discussion so many times uh, i guess the one thing which i definitely look forward for young data science professionals is basically the curiosity and the problem solving abilities because whatever said and done that has been a fundamental is a fundamental and will be the fundamental right because we are all here to solve business problem right whatever technique it is so i think that mindset of problem solving and the mindset of being curious are very very important um i think the techniques in my mind comes next uh, but i think the core fundamental is solving the problem um second is basically especially for the younger folks means who who are the aspiring data scientists right i think th- i know that there are a lot of packages available right now uh but foundational fundamentals remains i think still still the game and i'll tell you how right like see once you use the packages once i know hyperparameter optimization and all those things you do you can reach to a certain accuracy which mostly is like you are almost there means it's good for solving a say an say a capstone problem right but in the in the real life scenario typically what i have seen is that all these things are good to attain say a 70% accuracy but business will come to you and say that hey i need 80% so you know that that bottleneck is that in additional 10% and that is where the fundamentals comes into the picture right that is when the creativity comes into the picture uh, that is when feature engineering comes into the picture right so i guess uh, uh, like initially i think it will work well but until unless you you know the fundamentals well you know how to make that 70% to 80% i think you might later face difficulty as you move ahead so i think still i guess i in this world also when we are moving towards no code low code no code slash no low code but uh, i i still believe that the there is an importance to the fundamentals and especially i think that delta 10% is where we need it 
completely agree and all these llms and deep learning comes later if you are if you understand the foundation well, well which is the linear regression logistic regression or the basic concepts of statistics it becomes much easier to understand those things and exactly because while scaling right means uh, when you are working in bigger organizations they have the infra to scale all these so yes. techniques right mm. but smaller organization they don't they, mm. they cannot right? mm. like if you you know you ask any smaller startup and all to scale i mm. know even even for example in cloud for example right now i know that the generative ai capability in aws is still not available in india mm. obviously they are marketing it but it's not available in apac region as of now right mm. now if mm. i have to say scale mm. a gen ai solution how will mm. i scale it mm. right maybe you know gcp might have but but not every company can afford aws plus gcp plus azure right mm -hmm. so you so basically in those kind of scenarios um, i think the simple solutions works because you can easily scale them right mm -hmm. and as i mentioned that there is always a room of improvement and you can always uh, you know do it in the later stages but it can tie back to your that principle of first you need to satisfy business goal and then you need to go for a fancy or a more innovation mm. so i think at the end of the day the first version always linear regression and other things works pretty well uh, and then we can keep innovating so Correct. yes back on completely agree and um, this is one last question what would be your final message for the data track viewers oh i i think um, i have known abhishek for ages now uh, mm. and i have worked with him uh, for so many projects uh, across the time um or across the years rather uh, i guess uh, he's one of the best in the business and i have i've told him so many times about it and i i still remember that hackathon challenge what we had because he's superb in hackathon and i told him one day that you know my wish is basically can we actually compete in an hackathon so this is i think so i so what i wanted to say is um uh, abhishek is a great professional great teacher in terms of data science i think um, if you guys are subscribing his channel and part of these of his journey i'm sure that you guys will be benefiting quite a lot uh, because i know him personally i have seen him growing and i know i am all i know his knowledge as well so my advice will be just stay in this particular channel and uh, keep following him and keep seeing his videos uh, i am sure that it will be beneficial for you, all of you thank you thank you sujit for those kind words and thanks for your time bye thank thank you abhishek